Yes. We're coming out. Okay, we're ready. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. Christ has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us read in unison a portion of Psalm 114. Hallelujah! When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What, what ailed, ailed you, O sea, that you fled? fled. O oh, Jordan, that you turned turn back. back. You mountains, that you skipped like rams. You little hills, like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. 
A reading from Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy and Divine One, both Mama and Abba, I ask you to allow me to speak clearly, honestly, and to exemplify the spirit of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, all out there. We have quite the extravaganza going here today, considering. And I do hope that all of you have a very happy Easter. Obviously, there's a ton of things to talk about today. Today is the fulfillment of life after death. We've all been doing this long enough that I don't think it's too much of a shock that Jesus rose from the dead. Although, let's go back for a minute to the night before Jesus is crucified on Friday. Saturday goes through the day. It must have been a really long day. All the hope and expectation that they had for him was now dashed. They were all hiding in a room. Some had denied him, Peter being the most strong denier of the bunch. But the women, and ladies take note, were not afraid to go out and visit the tomb. And so, apocryphally, 
Metaphorically, figuratively, we don't know. But supposedly an angel had come and rolled back the stone. And Jesus was no longer laying in the tomb. There was a sheet or a robe later to become something that has been studied ad nauseum forever now, and they still can't decide whether it's real or not. And that is the Shroud of Turin. During the time we're in right now, which remember in biblical days, pestilence, disease, even plagues were not uncommon. Not that many hundred years later, we have the Black Plague, which most people agree that would be if you had lived on a cul-de-sac of five people, it would have wiped out three to four of them every day. So this world is not a stranger to epidemic, pandemic. And we are sad, obviously, when people die. We're sad when they get sick. Some of, some of them we may know, some of them may be friends. Look at all the people that are out there working because they have to, to try to save lives, including clergy. And yet, this is not about death. This is about life, life ever after. Hopefully, as a practicing Christian, you have bought into this wholeheartedly. But I know some have doubts, and that is why as humans we still fear death, many of us. However, we have been given a solemn promise by God that our lives will go on in what form none of us know but we will go on just as Jesus has let's take a little bit different tack now though If there's a few really great pieces of silver in this very dark cloud that is hanging over us right now, one of them I would say is that we all are truly learning how to live one day at a time, which is all any of us had to begin with. Not making many plans for the future. Can I get through today? I need to go to the store. I need to wear my mask. I may want to wear gloves. I don't want to be out too long. I want to be very careful what kind of human contact I have. Now for the introverts in the group, self included, being at home like this isn't too bad. I'm doing more reading right now than I've done in a long time and I love to read. And I love to watch movies. But I think the bigger part of this quote unquote dying to then be resurrected from death is a metaphor that we seriously need to contemplate and to apply to our lives. If we truly believe in Jesus, it is a healthy thing for us to die a little bit every day. Now, physiologically, we are. There's no way around that. The minute we're born, we're headed for death. But I'm talking about a death of the spirit. I'm talking about are we working to connect and to have a relationship to the best of our ability, a two-way relationship, 
with God, with Christ, with the Holy Spirit. John says, in order for me to decrease, or actually, I'm sorry, I apologize. In order for God to increase in me, I must decrease. Sorry, I'll take a mulligan on that one. Thomas Merton said, I want to disappear into God. Now it's hard to have discipline and ritual and spiritual acts every day of our lives. I hope we all pray every day. Some of us meditate every day. I hope you're working on those things if you haven't before, because now is the best time you'll ever have to do so. Every day, a little bit more of me, my ego, my wants, my sinful thoughts, feelings, and actions need to decrease as I spend more time in communication. With me, I like to do it through my best buddy, Jesus. Now is the time to pick up that mantle. Now is the time for us to grow stronger, more confident, wiser in Christ. I like to think of it as a daily resurrection because left to my own devices, I am one hot mess. But through Christ, I know that even when I fail, even when I have thoughts that aren't pure, even when I have horrible mistakes and bad decisions, God is there loving me, enveloping me. And every day I have the chance again when I rise in the morning to get back on track. But it's a conscious and sometimes unconscious act. We have to work at it. Being a Christian, you know, I've said it before, but being a true Christian, a true follower, is the hardest thing in this entire world to do. But the rewards are great. It makes me love more, pray more, hope more, meditate more, serve more. And that's what Jesus asked us to do. And so on this sort of weird Easter, we try the best we can to communicate with each other, to have a church. And I did mention to you that the first time I did this, it's rather odd preaching to empty pews. The old memory hasn't quite gone yet. And even for the eight and the 10, as I stare out at these two rows of pews, I see my brothers and sisters. We are creatures of habit and we do usually sit in the same places. And so I can see your faces. And I want you to know that you are so beloved by God, by the people willing to serve today, by me, and that I hope you have one of the better Easter's you've ever had under these circumstances. Amen. Now let us recite the creed of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us take this chance to hear a beautiful song done by our great singer, Linda Parker.
Absolutely gorgeous. And now let us take a little quiet time, take a couple deep breaths, close our eyes, offer up our own personal prayers before we get to the prayers of the people. Holy and Divine One, we come on bended knee for you to hear our supplications. We will respond to each prayer by saying, hear our plea. We pray for all who are suffering from the virus and ask they be healed. We also pray especially for the elderly and infirm to keep the virus away. Hear our plea. For all of those who are out of work, help them to have food, water, and shelter. We ask for people to think of others first, and not only stop hoarding, but to share with others, especially those in real need. Hear our plea. We pray for all doctors, nurses, medical staff, first responders, truckers, and all who work in establishments from where we obtain food and supplies who are on the front lines of this. Keep them well. Hear our plea. We pray for government to put aside their petty differences and work in unison for the betterment of all people, especially the needy. Hear our plea. We pray that we do not give in to fear, but intensify our faith in the one who loves us all. Hear our plea. We pray for tolerance, acceptance, wisdom, and courage as we all go through this together. Hear our plea. We pray for all of the sweet souls departed and their families and friends. Hear our plea. We pray that this time is used fruitfully for comfort and solitude, daily prayer, meditation, spiritual rituals and reading. Hear our plea. We pray to remember that as followers of Jesus the Christ, our actions need to reflect the spreading of the gospel. Hear our plea. We offer up these prayers in humility and in reverence for the creator of all. We thank you for all the gifts and grace we receive and ask that we do not take our blessings for granted. Amen. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Truly, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. And now, I would like to have Steve Lamar come forward to read a poem by a woman that has become a Good Shepherd favorite, Mary Oliver. And I think this poem is very fitting for this day. I'm going to read today for you a morning poem by Mary Oliver on this blessed Easter morning. Every morning the world is created. Under the orange sticks of the sun, the heat dashes of the night turn into leaves again and fasten themselves to the high branches. And the ponds appear like black cloth on which are painted islands of summer lilies. It is your nature to be happy. You will swim away along the soft trails for hours, your, emergent, your imagination alighting everywhere. And if your spirit carries within it the thorn that is heavier than lead, if it is all you can do to keep on trudging, there is still somewhere deep within you, a beast shouting that the earth is exactly what it wanted. Each pond with its blazing lilies is a prayer, heard and answered lavishly every morning. Whether or not you have ever dared to be happy, whether or not you have ever dared to pray, pray. Be happy. We are the resurrection. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. And now if you will give me one second. Since it's Easter, we know, especially the children are out there, probably not having the usual Easter egg hunt. I know we tried to create one virtually. Having grown up in both the church and on Easter time, we always remember, my family is, that Easter was not only really cool for the resurrection of Jesus, but it was also the first day we could eat all that stuff we gave up for Lent, including the legendary Easter bunnies that were chocolate. Although we all agreed here that we were hoping they weren't hollow and that we're actually solid chocolate. And so, to remind us that the Easter bunny loves Jesus too, 
and that Jesus loves the Easter Bunny, I give you this. Amen.